Welcome to our lecture online. In this video, we're going to show you how the equation came about, the integral form came about for arc length. Again, we're starting at the same point we did on the last video, that we realized that a small section on the curve, let's call it delta L, can be approximated using the Pythagorean theorem by saying that delta L is equal to the square root of the change in x squared plus the change in y squared. We also are going to need to realize that the slope of a line is equal to the change in y over the change in x for any small section. If you make it a really small section, it's good for that section, so we can call that the, the derivative of that function. So we come back over here and we're going to use the format that y is a function of x. And then we can say that the length of the curve is equal to the sum of all the small little delta L's. And of course, the delta L is equal to this. So we substitute that for delta L. Now notice we have a sub K for both delta X and delta Y. But we don't need a sub, uh, a sub K for delta X because we're going to let delta X be the same length each time. It's independent of which section we take. Now delta Y, because of the curve, will change from one section of the curve to the other section of the curve curve so we can actually get rid of that sub k for delta x it's going to be the same each time and then we're going to use a mathematical trick that is used for a lot of these solutions when you're actually trying to calculate the arc length of different examples we're going to typically use this kind of trick we're going to try to factor something out so we're going to write that l is equal to the sum from k equals 1 to n of the square root of delta x squared, we're going to factor that out of the two terms, so we end up with a 1 here, plus a delta y sub k over a delta x quantity squared, like this. Oh, and I need another parentheses. All right, why did we do that? Because we wanted to come up with an expression where we have the slope equals to that. And because the slope can be found from any function by taking the derivative, that's then going to be the method to find the integral format of the arc length. So what we can do now next, we can say, well, first of all, the delta x can be factored out of the, the square root sign. So now we can write that L is equal to the sum from k equals 1 to n of the square root of 1 plus the delta y sub k over delta x quantity squared and then the delta x moved out, the delta x squared out of the square root sign simply becomes a delta x. Now we're going to replace this by the derivative of the function. So now we can write that L is equal to the square, uh, the infinite sum, or, well not necessarily yet the infinite sum, but from k equals 1 to n, depending on of course how big n is, equal to the square root of 1 plus the function, the derivative of the function of x squared times delta x. So now we see where we're going with this, because if we're going to find the arc length of a function, all we need to do is take the derivative of the function, square it, put it inside the square root sign, and multiply times the delta x. Of course, if you wanted then to put into integral format, you're now going to take the limit of this. So L is equal to the limit, whoop, forgot my i, the limit as n goes to infinity. So now we're making the delta x smaller and smaller and smaller. So as delta x goes to zero or n goes to infinity, we have an infinite number of these. So we have the sum from k equals 1 to n of the square root of 1 plus the derivative of the function squared times delta x. Now, of course, when we take this to the limit, as delta x goes to zero, as n goes to infinity, that then indeed come, becomes the integral from x equals a to x equals b. Now, normally they don't write x there, so it's not always understood. It's simply from the x a to x equals b limits of the square root of 1 plus the functions, the derivative of the function squared times dx. And this then becomes the integral form for finding the arc length of any curve. Seems simple enough, and on the surface you go, wow, that looks pretty easy, and it is. However, when we take the derivative of a function and put inside the square root sign, 
you sometimes end up with something that's very difficult to integrate and that's where the challenge comes in when we're dealing with arc length. That's the only place where it's a challenge is we're going to end up with things inside integral. You look at it and go, wow, how do I integrate that? So we'll see some examples of that. And notice that the examples they typically put in a book, they look kind of weird and they're done in such a way that makes it easy to integrate the integral and so that's kind of cheating because they should put in some other examples where you look at it and go wow i didn't realize that was going to be that difficult so we'll show you how to do that in the videos to come